this and it was I don't know if it was successful but I've seen a lot of copies so they at least produced a lot of copies and it was not a game where you could lose or anything but it was just effect it wasn't an effect processor it was like a sound world builder that anybody could pick up and understand pretty quickly some of the the modes were kind of complicated but hmm. I'm sort of interested in that idea as well. And Jim O'Rourke had this, I forget what it was called. It was a zoom effect thing and there was one more. It's always on Japanese TV. He recently did uh, Inca. He was singing like a, it's almost like a loungy folk music with a lot of vibrato. But he was singing some of that on Japanese TV. And it was quite funny. Um, anyway, those kind of playful interfaces can—they they could be a lot of fun too. But like I'm saying, uh, I think this basic model needs to get implemented, and then we can talk about that. Luckily, to do this, all we have to do is implement. We already have something that keeps track of entities. And all we will need to do is create a graph object. Well, we don't need a graph object. This isn't a rigid graph. We're just using collision detection still. Um, and, and that hasn't that probably won't pose any problems for us, for our application. And it will allow bouncy stuff to happen, which is fun. Um, but all that's different from what we have now. There are these belt things that slide. The basic input, shooting thing, output, receiving thing, we have that already. So all we have to implement is this belt class. And I wrote some notes. I, was, I wrote some notes in a book while I was away from home. So let me bust them out. Yeah, so we need a belt class. Now this belt class itself cannot collide. I think this belt class can have these entities as sub entities of itself. It can just manage them internally and figure out where to draw them and such. So for example this is our mic input entity. It can remain that way. But we'll just manage it internally. Yeah, so it'll be a wrapper for entities pretty much. So there will be... Hmm, so these entities won't be directly in the game engine but within the built entity. And these guys will be directly in the engine on as first level, first class citizens, if you will. Yeah, and then we just have to implement the slide up and slide down and root collision detection to these guys. And that's pretty much it. We also have to do something like, yeah, we will need to be able to pass collisions through. So. Hmm. Yeah. That might be getting ahead of ourselves. I mean, we could just pick the closest object too to co to collide with. We'll assume that this is com this takes the complete y axis for now. I'm starting to realize this looks a lot like a slot machine, so you could have like the slot randomizer, which might be fun. So let's make a note. This is still the fun part when you start to design the interface. So 
So how long do you think it will take to get this belt up? I'm, because I was doing Audacity development and I think I, yeah, I was working on that microphone stuff. I slipped behind a little and, well today's the last day of some of the milestones. By the end of the day I'm supposed to have the belt up. And I'm supposed to have some kind of object animation. And that's this part. When you spit something out, draw something cool. Not just... Not just the growing... Well, the growing square part, that's fine. We can leave that. But when we take input, we don't want to just delete that immediately. We want it to smoothly go into this somehow. So, I, I don't know if I can do both of those today. Maybe if I spend 10 hours from now, I could do that. But honestly, the belt part doesn't sound so hard. It's a big visual change. We'll need to rewrite the game state map, which could take a little while to get right. And we don't have all these input stuff, so we'll have to add dummy things for now. Um, and it's sort of a bunch of display code, basically. So actually, I take that back. It will take a while. If we are lucky, I say five hours. That's a conservative lucky. If if we are, if everything just goes perfectly, uh, and there's no nothing, there's no unforeseen tasks. There's always unforeseen tasks. Then it could just take maybe two hours, two or three hours to get on the screen. That's minimum. Right. Yeah, and to do the slide stuff. Yeah, that's all included. I don't think I'm going to finish that today, but I can get started at least. The object animation is less complicated, so I could just say to get started on that first. But that's going to be now an interaction with the belt. Maybe. I'm not sure. But it could be potentially dependent. And the belt itself is not dependent on the, the object animation part. So I'm going to do the belt first. And it's going to be awesome. Let's save this and see how saving works. So this is our pictures. Extreme programming pics. Yeah, PNG, at least a format I can just put anywhere I want. And we'll call this uh, uh, built. Oops. Funny how. I need to type the file name down here. Built and TD built. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me while I drink some more water. Some of my glasses. Okay, so all that talking, that was about 15 20 minutes of design talking without any code. But there's no reason to feel bad for that. Alright, so creating a new class. That's going to be a normal class class. And we can call it built entity. It's going to be a subclass of could call it a normal physics entity, but that takes all the collision stuff. 
think I just want to make it a filter entity and see what happens. Anyway, I can worry about that later too. Yep, and the first thing I do is make that an MM. Very important. Yep. So why don't we open those files up now in Emacs. One second. I will mention that there is already a class that, we sh that is pretty similar. The snakeable entity. I never demonstrated how this works because we are limiting the number of children it can have to zero now. But it is also a entity that has sub entities. It worked like a katamari style. You could pick stuff up, or a snake style, I guess. Yeah, that classic game, Snake. Or Snake, Rattle, and Roll. Yeah, so it would work like this. Um, yeah. And there is a way to pass through things, so... Like this case is possible using the function hard pass through and um, hard collision detect and collision detect. One defines the basic shape and one defines the actual stuff. So that's all this, that's why this collision code is a little complicated. It checks all the sub entities. Yeah, and it splits up collisions with normal physics entity and snakeable entity. I think. And snakeable entities are pick are, you can pick them up. If they're just normal physics entities, you can't. Yeah, see? And also the snakeable entities have larger size, because these are move both moving objects. Um, yeah, this was kind of a tricky class. The, the belt class is much simpler. Um, but let me look at how drawing works. So I bet there's just a loop and we, yeah, there's just a draw children call. It's this simple. You just say entity draw. And the children maintain their absolute position. They don't maintain a relative position. Um, or is that not correct? No, that's not correct. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, let's take a look at what we do and just copy it. Well, jaw children happens. Actually, jaw children might not be in this call even. Yeah. Yeah, that must be in filter entity or uh, normal physics entity. So we'll have to look at that. 